In this video, let's talk about the smallest OLED TV from LG, the 42-inch one. I purchased this TV not for gaming, not for streaming. Instead, I'm going to use it as a Mac monitor. The box is very light, only 20 pounds. Even though I really like metal parts, when it comes to this huge monitor or small TV, the lighter, the better. Let's address the elephants in the room. Why? I need such a huge monitor. In my typical usage, I need to have multiple windows open and I need to see their contents at the same time, which means I don't want to switch among the different windows. Second question, I already have a 43 inch Dell monitor, why I need another one? The reason is I have been using two 4K monitors, but the second one is a smaller 24 inch one and I use it in a vertical fashion. It's not big enough, so that's why I need a second huge one. The third question, why OLED? Why LG C2? On the screen, I show you three different huge displays, the right one is the Dell 43 inch one which I have been using for about two years. The price is cheaper but I really want to try OLED as my main monitor. LG does have a newly released 48 inch OLED monitor but it's mainly targeted for gaming market and the 48 inch is still too big. Based on my experience with my Dell 43 inch monitor, that's already the upper limit which I can tolerate. Then the only choice I have is the still relatively new LG C2. In the C1 world, the smallest size TV is 48 inch, but for C2, LG added a smaller one which is 42 inch. It has very similar price as the 48 inch one. To put it another way, basically you are paying more for smaller size. Because this 42 inch is a sweet spot for me, I went with this particular LG C2. Of course, for both Dell and LG monitors, I didn't go with the MSRP, so you need to find deals. I connected the two monitors to a Mac Mini. The left one is the LG OLED, the right one is the Dell. As you can see, the Dell is a little bit bigger. Out of box, without any changes in the TV itself and in Mac OS, the display is already looking very, very beautiful. Especially the black color is pitch dark. i never seen such impressive image in a IPS LCD. Now now it's sunny noontime. The OLED TV works perfectly fine. Let me close the window blinds. It looks even better. Okay, I'm happy. Thanks for watching. Just joking. The fun of purchasing the OLED TV is to mess up the complicated settings, right? So without go to the configuration, how we can end this video. Before digging into the configuration details, let's have some fun first. I hook up a Samsung LCD TV with a MacBook, LG OLED, Dell, IPS, Samsung LCD TV. The smallest one is a Apple MacBook Pro with liquid Rantana XDR display. At this moment, they are supposed to display a pure black background, but as you can see, they are already looking very different. The LG and the Apple, they are very black. They have the glossy screen, so you may see some reflections. I'm used to Apple's glossy monitors, so it doesn't really bother me. And for the two LCD displays, you can see the disgusting light bleeding among the edges. That's a common issue for LCD display. You can ignore the two big ones for the Dell monitor because that's something I did to it. It's not the LCD's fault. Another huge problem for the LCD displays is the color for black. As you can see, they are both bluish grayish color. Depending on what's the brightness you set to the monitors, it may be even worse. But for OLED, when it's black, there's no light 
behind it. So black is black, no matter how bright you adjust the monitor to. I'm showing you 10 pictures extracted from LG's HDR content from YouTube, and you judge the picture qualities by yourself. By the way, I didn't change any setting for the Dell monitor. I'm also surprised that the Dell looks so bad in the pictures. Maybe that's due to the sunlight in the room. Even though the Dell monitor is not glossy, maybe that's why it's so evenly grayish. Another thing is among the four monitors, the Dell one is the only one which doesn't support HDR. So this comparison is not fair to Dell. That's why in the beginning I said it's just for fun. Another thing I need to mention is even though I put this part in the beginning of the video, in fact I shoot the video after I made all the adjustments for all the four monitors, I already changed the HDR settings. If you are watching this video, I believe you are already aware of the WBC versus WBE panel problem for the C2 TV, specifically about the 42 inch one. Rumor said post quarter two, the TVs you purchase may be all WBE panel. So I waited for two months till July, I placed my order to validate whether I get the WBC or WBE panel, I purchased a cheap service remote. In the right side of the screen, you can see I get the module infer 2 with that value and it corresponds to a post on the internet forum regarding how to tell whether it's WBC or WBE. If that post is true, my panel is WBE. I'm happy my two months wait was worth it. After connecting the TV to my Mac, I went to display setting, but for this LG TV monitor, I don't see the HDR setting. So there must be something wrong in the TV side. Let me go to the TV configuration to make the changes. Using TV's remote, go to configuration, click all settings, go to general, devices, HDMI setting and enable 4K. So basically this setting simply enable the color depth which is higher than 8 bit. To support HDR, it is required. After enabling deep color from Mac, you can see the high dynamic range setting is here. HDR mode is enabled on Mac. But if you check the refresh rate setting, there's no 120 hertz. Although the TV itself, it does support higher refresh rate than 60, because of the max limitation, it simply doesn't show the higher refreshing rate here. I am not too satisfied with only using 60Hz display when the TV or monitor does support 120Hz. My idea is okay, let me try to use a adapter. I'm showing you the specs from LG and Apple. For this particular TV, SG mentioned okay, it has four HDMI parts. They are all supporting HDMI 2.1, 4K at 120Hz. But in the right side, from Apple. As you can see, for this particular Mac Mini M1, even including other M1, M2 Mac computers, they have the similar problem, which is for the HDMI part, it's only 2.0. They all come with Thunderbolt 3 or 4 parts. What I want to do is, I want to use a adapter, connect the Thunderbolt part from Mac to the HDMI part of the TV. The adapter support 4K 120Hz HDR and the HDMI cable also support 120Hz. Let's see whether it works. First problem, the four edges of the display area are cut off, so the display is not complete. I tried the same adapter and cable on a Samsung LCD TV. There's no such problem, so I believe this is the LG TV's issue.
The second problem is it simply doesn't show 120 hertz at all. If you check the refresh rate, you only see 60 maximumly. Nothing's changed if you compare to the direct HDMI connection. So which means my try failed. I guess the reason is to support the complete 4K HDR at 120Hz display, the HDMI 2.1 standard needs 48 gigabits bandwidth, but the Thunderbolt 3 or 4 is only 40 gigabits maximumly. I guess that's the root cause for this issue. Hopefully, in the future's Mac, Apple can support HDMI 2.1 or allow us to combine two Thunderbolt ports to support higher refresh rate. The number one concern when people use OLED TV is the risk of burn-in. When it comes to Mac, there are several apparent settings you'd better take care of. For example, the menu bar. If you let it hang there, it's very possible you will have burn-in very soon. For dock, a similar situation. I mean, the system setting enable the automatically hide and show the dock option. And similarly for menu bar, automatic hiding. Of course, you'd better enable the screen saver as well, but I won't waste your time on that part. About OLED TV settings, there are no absolute correct answers when it comes to monitor use. What I'm going to show you is just my way. You may have your own preferences. Go to setting, select general, OLED care, device self care, and then we want to disable energy saving step because it may mess up your monitor display. For TV, it's not big deal. For monitor, you want it to reflect what your computer wants to display. Then click the input button on your remote, select home dashboard, then click the three dots on the top right, select edit inputs. For me, I changed the HDMI to click the icon and choose PC. This is a little bit confusing setting. Basically, it's changing the Chroma setting to 444. However, I cannot make it work for Mac OS. I'm using the service remote. I'm checking the HDMI history. As you can see, it's changed to 4208 bit, not 444. If you know the answer how to make it work for Mac OS, please let me know in the comments area. Let's continue to the OLED TV setting. Go to all settings, picture, HDMI mode. I prefer film maker mode as the default mode. Out of box, this setting is already good enough for me. So I only need to make several minor adjustments. The default brightness is too high. It's not good for my eyes and for the OLED panel. So I'm reducing it to 30 to 40 because it's corresponding to 100 nit display. I want the TV to keep the original image from computer. I'm going to disable several settings, for example, the dynamic tone mapping. Move on to color setting. The white balance is super important. The default warm 50 is too yellow to me, but warm 25 is a little bit bluish. I choose 35. Of course, different people have different preferences. Clarity has something to do with text display. The sharpness, the 10, is already very minor, but I still want to keep it zero. For true motion, the default is already off. We don't want it to mess up with the monitor display. Before using OLED TV as my monitor, I had a concern about text display. I was worrying about, okay, maybe the background will be very flashy, will do harm to my eyes and will be too bright, right? That issue doesn't exist for this display at all. That's good. However, I found another problem. Here I'm showing you a very extreme situation for both the LG and Dell monitors. I set them as native 4K and without scaling, I use a text editor. I use 
use very small font to display a sentence in different colors and backgrounds. I feel the LG's result is a little bit weird. I can read the text, but they are a little bit blurry. To understand why is that, I use a close-up micro lens. I took two pictures. Let me zoom in to see it clearer. This is the zoomed in result for LG. As you can see, the black fonts, they look good, but red and green ones, they look blurry, right? So then let me make them even bigger. Now you can see why. The red and the green ones, the colors bleed outside of the correct pixel. That's why it looks blurry. This text is before I change the TV's configuration. Now let's see after the configuration change whether it's improved or not. The top right image is for the text effect after I change the TV configuration. You may notice some color differences if you compare to the original one. You may want to ignore that because I believe that's due to my camera's white balance setting that's not relevant let's zoom in using the same part as you can see the color pollution situation is the same even after the configuration change the text still look blurry however let me show you the Dell LCD's zoom in result for red and the green the pixels nearby they don't get the color polluted. So that's why I don't feel any blurry in the LCD part. Now let's talk about ABL and ASBL. These are two very confusing concepts. ABL means Alter Brightness Limiter and ASBL means Alter Static Brightness Limiter. I'm showing you two web pages. They are both from a article called OLED Dimming Confusion from TFT Central website. Just to summarize, ABL means okay if all of a sudden then your image has very bright objects. The system may try to reduce the brightness automatically just to save the life of the panel. ASBL means, okay, if your image stays static for some time, the system will try to dim the screen to save power and make the panel's life longer. And when it comes to monitor usage, ideally you want to disable both. But because we are talking about OLED panel, for the sake of longer life, LG simply doesn't want you to change. There's no way you can change the behavior for ABL. But for ASBL, yes, LG does have an internal setting. It's called TPC or Temporal Peak luminance control. You can enable or disable it using service remote. It's not available in the normal configuration. Just a warning, if you use service remote to change the settings, it may void the warranty. So be careful, take your own risk. From service menu, go to OLED. Then the first item is called TPC enable. So I turn it off. Near the last, there's another one. It's called G. SR. It's global sticky reduction. It has something to do with the logo. So if you want, you can also disable this one. To summarize my likes and dislikes, I like the design look of the TV or monitor and it works perfectly as my main huge monitor and I like its beautiful color, perfect picture quality, excellent HDR support. What I don't like, first, I cannot use the 120Hz refresh rate but it's max problem not the tv and another problem is about text even though in regular usage i won't be able to notice that at all only when you have super small text and you want to look at the screen very closely then you may notice some difference yeah that's it thanks for watching